Wow. What up, y'all? I'm going to show y'all how to chop up a sample and make a program out of it, man. I got a sample down here. Y'all can download it. Follow along with me. All right, let's get into this. All right, man. You got your sample over here. It's your file browser to your left. We're going to pull our sample. We're in main mode right now. We're going to pull our sample into sample edit. We're going to use this uh, funk with me sample. All right. Let's go over here. Sample edit. You want to click on the little pencil icon. All right, let's go ahead and change your tempo to 100 BPM because that's the tempo of our sample. All right, you got it changed? All right, let's go. Pull it in, drop it. All right. You see up here, you can right click this line up here and you can change it to time, sample, or beats. We're going to put it on beats. You can see that this sample right here is four bars, so it's all ready to go to chop. But that's how you want to do if you want to find out how long your sample is. You want to change up your tempo and everything to see if it lines up. Like you see this right here, it's going to be four beats. It's going to equal one bar. And number two, that's going to be one bar. So we got five. So that's going to be four bars. All right, man, since you got your sample in here, we already got a trim marker set because this sample's already set up for that. But usually you would set your trim markers. You would set your beginning trim marker. You zoom in right here. You zoom in this little jump right down here. Or you can move this up here too to move around. Or you can use these down here. But I don't use them if you had an MPC Renaissance or something. That makes sense. But I don't use them, so hats off to you if you use them. But uh, we're going to use this zoom right here. We're going to zoom in. We already got it set, the sample, since I saved it that way. But you would usually get as close as you can to the beginning of the wave to have it right on. And this right here, these little buttons down here, you got your zero snap. If you had that on, it would snap to the wave. You see it jerking? It would try to snap to the beginning of it. That's real good for drum breaks and stuff, but uh, sometimes they get on your nerves trying to snap around and try to get it at the perfect spot. So we're just going to leave that off. Excuse me, y'all. I got a cold, so yeah. But anyways, you want to pull that to the first since we already know how much time this is right here. It's four bars. You want to set your end trail marker too, so we're going to go ahead and set that to the end. And all this stuff down here, man, this is what you're controlling with your element. You got pad 10. That's going to play from the beginning all the way through one shot. Pad 11 is going to be note on. Push it down to go. And you got pad 8 and pad 4 are going to do the same thing, but it's going to do from the ending of your trim marker. See? That's the ones you're going to use the most in pad 13 for a loop. See, you hold it down, it's going to loop all the way through. That's good to find your loop points if you want to loop. Anyways, man, that goes over that right there. That's how you trigger your sample here in trim mode. All right, we're going to go into chop mode. You want to click on chop. It's going to bring up this right here. Just going to have play where you can display the sample. We ain't going to worry about that right now. But you got some effects over here, man. If you wanted to... Let's say it was a drum break and you wanted to like take a kick out. You could say this was a kick right here. This little piece of wave right here was a kick. We could go to extract and we could name that, man. We can just take that kick and take it out and name it. You can do that and make a drum kick. You know what I'm saying? But anyways, let's show you that right there. So you got that over there and you can discard, delete, you know, silence, fade in, time stretch, bit reduction, all that stuff, and pitch. But I show pitch in another way. It's an easier way to pitch your whole sample. Anyways, man, we're going to do chop. You want to go over here. This is your main go-to little box over here. You're going to scroll down on this, and you got different modes. You got the threshold. That's going to see how low the wave threshold gets. That would chop like on how low it gets. Like see how low it is right there. It would probably put a chop there and you could set the threshold but I never used that. You got regions. It's going to give you an equal amount of chops. That's what I use the most. I'm sure everybody does. And BPM. Chops by the BPM. I never use it so I really don't know too much about it. But anyways man we're going to hit regions. It's already going to do a 16 chop. 
It's going to give you 16 off the bat. You can do 128 chops. All you got to do is move up with your mouse right here. But we're going to do 16 chops. And look, you can listen in the right on, man. See, if you get your BPM and everything set right, man, you get everything lined up, then you can get it taken care of. That's where Auto Shot can help you if you just get yourself set up and you know how to work it right. If you want to manually put in a slice, you just go in here and you see this little red arrow. You just click. Boom, it'll put it in. You can just move it around. Move your slices around like that right there. You go up here and undo this. All right, so we got all our chops, man. You can manually put them in like that right there with the little arrow. And this is over here, the link slices. Usually I keep this on. I'm going to show you if I take them off what it does. I take it off. Let me zoom in over here. You see, this is the end of chop one would be the beginning of chop two. But you can move that. And now it's just going to stop where it is. Chop two has its own beginning now. If you was to move it, see? But we're going to leave that on. Boom. So they can roll smoothly, you know? But anyways, man, that's how that works right there, your link slices. Now let's go over here. You want to study in down here to the non-destructive convert. Because to extract new samples, that's going to save every slice to a new sample. It's going to take up a lot of space on your computer. And you can come back and fix your slices, I think. I'm not sure. I've done it a couple of times. But uh, it's cool if you want to get like all your drums out of a cool drum break or something. You know what I'm saying? And uh, this stuff down here, I don't really mess with it, man. But you can go to slice to pad. That's going to be like one sample if you wanted to take a loop. That'd be cool for like one chop or whatever. But we're going to go to new program. Non-destructive. It's going to pull up this box right here. Convert or sign slices. You're going to go convert to, it's going to be already set, new program using slices. And it's has slice type, non-destructive slice. Then you're going to have a little box down here It's going to be create events. That's if you want your chops to be on the grid, to show up on the grid. This is going to be a straightforward progression of the chops. So we don't want that. I mean, all it is is going to lay out your mini blocks, but we want to make new mini blocks. So forget that. So we're ready to go, man. We want to do it. Boom. All right, you see over here, since we did it, now the name of your program is going to be the name of the sample with a sliced up. And it's going to be over here in your project information box. Now let's go back over here to main mode. Hit on your MPC or click up here. Boom. You're going to click on the program that we just chopped up and you're going to pull it over to number one. And now... They're set, man. They're set just like we sliced them up. And they're going to be cutting each other off because let's go over here and I'm going to show you. In program mode, they're set to mono. So it's going to be like they're all set to the same cut group. They're going to cut each other off. If you had it on poly, then they're going to overlap each other. I mean, that'd be cool if you had bass lines and everything, but... We're going to keep it on mono, man, because that's going to cut everything off, right? And this right here is going to be your main pitch. This is where I pitch my sample. Other people might do it another way. I do it here. It goes down 12 semitones and up 12 semitones. But it's like 36%. You can go down. That's going to be your uh, low. It's going to be your slow pitch. Or you can go up, you know, and get your Kanye West on. And this fine tune right here is going to equal just one of them at 99. It'll equal one semitone at 99. That's like the fine tune to your samples or drums or whatever you want to do. Hit. C. And all this over here. This is layering. If you want to layer like another slice on top of each other, you could just pick. Well, 
I'm not sure if you can pick from right here, but you can do it with drum kits. If you did the destructive one, I know for sure you can pick other slices, but I don't, if you want to layer slices, you still can over here. Simultaneously play. You can pick whatever slice from this over here that you wanted to layer on each other. But all this over here, man, is great for when you start uh, layering drums and everything. This would be your put filters on slices over here. Let's say I just wanted a filter on uh, one slice. I put a low pass filter on uh, one slice. See, that's on slice four I'm hitting. So you can just put high pass filter and whatever you want to on there. And over here would be your effects. Sometimes that's dumb and don't want to come up, but you can put an effect on each slice. All you do is go over here to your mixer menu and then put an effect on whatever slice you want to. Just hit this little arrow right here. Boom, pull up your effects. Just double click and you would have your effect on that slice. Let's take that off. But you can do your whole program. I like to put a delay on my slices, man. I'll show you a plug in a few minutes. Let's go back to program edit and I'll show you something. All right, down here is gonna be your envelope, like to fade in and fade out. So you wanna fade in and fade out your chops, man. That's the best way. And over here, I'm gonna show you that you can select all of them at one time and do them all at the same time. You can select the multiple ones, hit the multiple button and just select ones you want to select right here or hit hit the pad and then select them too but we're going to select all of them all 16 what's going to select everything we don't really matter or we we'll just go to multiple but you can do all if you got more we we'll just do multiple right now and just select just click on these boom and we're going to go over here and fade in and fade out our slices man come over here to attack Put this up to about it's about 30 something to 40 something second fade in is pretty good and your decay that'll fade out your chop man see all the way up it's like hardly playing it but Hear them? They're all connected together now, man. They're all faded in and faded out right. But that's what you can do right there, man. You can select multiple. And then you can fix everything to the same thing. Like you can put a filter on every chop from here. Every chop would have the same filter on it. But that's how that works, man. Want to get your stuff good to go. And you can put it back on current shop. And this right here is still going to pitch everything. All right, let's go back to main menu. Boom. Over here is going to be your program inserts. This is going to be your effects over your whole program, man. This is a good spot to put a delay or a reverb on your chops. I like to put a delay, this new plugin, man. It was free right now. By the time you see this video, it's probably not going to be free. But it's like uh, 40 bones for it, man. But it's perfect for sample chops, dude. So pick it up. Isotope delay. It's right here, man. It's perfect for sample chops. You hear that? You can set them up, man, just right. But that's pretty much it, man. That's how you set up your samples and chop them up, man, and make them into programs. And once you save inside your DAW, or if you're in a standalone mode, you know you come up here, you save your project, or you can save current program like we did with the drum programs if you watched the other video. You can save the current program up here, or you can come down here and right click it and save but anyways if you're inside your DAW like I'm in FL Studio as soon as I save my whole project it's gonna be saved but that's it man that's how you do it that's how you chop up a sample man stay tuned to the step by step and I'll show y'all how to layer some drums next man later